Today's speaker is Omid Makmali, and he will give us um, his second lecture on Frobenius integrability and Catan geometries. Thank you very much. So let's uh, review the outline of the lectures. So the last time we talked about conformal geometry in dimension four and three, and uh, looked at Frobenius integrability for these geometries. Towards the end, there was something that I said about um, having the rank two distribution and the twister bundle of 3D conformal structures. And um, the growth vector of that rank two distribution was two, three, four, five, just like a fourth order ODE. But what I did not check, and uh, Dennis uh, immediately asked if is whether this rank two is, uh, has a split. I was hoping that it does, uh, because then that would be really nicely relate to what we're gonna talk about today, but it's actually, I went check and no, it doesn't have a splitting. So that was unfortunate, but- uh, uh, Ex uh, yeah. Excuse me, uh, Omid, can I make uh, a question? Can I- Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, so I, I remember this distribution. I, I, I thought it was the distribution on the, yeah, on the twister bundle, but this twister bundle, is this the um, rank one bundle? No, it's three? a rank two. This, it's a, it's a, 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 yeah, and that's actually very it's, weird. Like, um, it's it's not the you know the sky bundle. This I see. see. Okay, it's I, something five dimensional. Yeah, because and, the other one has a, a splitting, and I got confused last time. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah, that one yeah. is that's that's fine. I and see, this one, so. I was hoping it does, but there's a distinguished direction, but there's no splitting, and um, I hope I'll come back to this next time. Uh, I have. Um, maybe it'll give something interesting for what I'm going to talk about <coughs> in the next lecture. <coughs> oh, uh, so, so are you going to define it again later or can you? No, no, no. It? It's just, uh, it just doesn't have a splitting. But yes, next section, if I, if I want to talk about, so I'm going to just review what we oh, have. Okay. This lecture. Okay, thank you. Um, so today we're going to again repeat the same sort of uh, construction with just a little bit of extra ingredient for uh, two, three, five geometries and then start giving examples of uh, uh, 235 with some integrability uh, properties. And then in the next lecture, we use the same construction and extend it to a larger uh, uh, context and use it to not only give examples of integrable conformal structures in four and three, but even in higher dimensions. So this is what I'm going to talk about and, uh, uh, next time. All right, so let's review. Uh, again, we've heard this quite a few times. Um, um, uh, two, three, five geometries there. Again, they define Cartan geometries. So we have a five dimensional manifold with a rank two distribution and it's bracket generating. So it's growth vector is two, three, five. And it defines a Cartan geometry of type G2 and P1, first parabola. The Cartan connection, it's a, a G2 value uh, connection form, and we're gonna uh, basically uh, uh, you know that uh, this way. Uh, uh, and uh, this takes value in, uh, because it's split G2 in uh, SO34 with respect to this inner product. Um, so this omegas, so here we have um, negative one, negative one, the, these two, omega zero and omega one. Omega two has uh, here negative two. So the uh, uh, bracket of these two vector, viewed as vectors or dual to these one forms uh, goes here. And here this one is minus three and minus three. So omega zero, omega two gives omega three, omega one, omega two gives omega four. Uh, I'm viewing it as a dual to these one forms. Um, so this would be G minus one, G negative. And here up there, we have G positive uh, up here. Uh, so this is plus one, plus one, plus two, plus three. And um, all right, so I think um, this is mostly what we're gonna need. Um, and then because we have a Cartan geometry, 
uh, this we have a uh, it's actually a parabolic geometry so we have carton curvature and in fact there is something that is fundamental part of this um, curvature module which is known as um, carton quartic it's a quartic uh, that can be written this way um, so it's a symmetric it's a, it, it takes value in do, uh, you know uh, quartics of d dual d is our rank 2 distribution and omega 0 and omega 1 span d star um, and here these are the coefficients of this quartic omega uh, a0 to a4 there's also a larger module uh, which is known as a ternary quartic so this one is a quartic on the you know the de derived d uh, dual to the derived distribution of D. And it can be written this way with this, like this T, where uh, now omega zero, omega one, and omega two span D, uh, partial D star. And this ternary can be written this way, where B, C, D, and E, E is a scalar, D is of this form for the two coefficients D zero, D one. And here we have C zero to C two, and here we have D i's. And uh, here, this ternary quartic has 15 entries, which sort of give the entire vial uh, curvature of the corresponding conformal structure for this 235 geometry. So the uh, structure group that acts on this coframe omega 0 to omega 1 um, takes value in a conformal group CO23. And it can be written this way for some parameters T1, G1, T1, F1, F2, and uh, X0, X1, and X2. Um, so the Lie algebra can be written this way. This is the Lie algebra of this, where here we have gamma 1, theta 1. Gamma 1 corresponds to the group parameter G1. Here, this is very similar to, I want to just sort of remind you what we did uh, last time we had uh, this parameter G, parameter T, and uh, um, here we have also these uh, uh, size uh, which correspond to X1, X0, and X2. So this takes value in the conformal um, algebra, the algebra. And this is uh, um, CO23 with respect to this inner product. Okay, so now remember we want to investigate integrability in two, three, five geometries. So as we did in conformal structure in 4D and 3D, we need some sort of distinguished, uh, distinguished subspaces in the tangent bundle at each point. And again, we remind ourselves that for any two, three, five geometry, there's a, a natural, um, conformal structure defined, which you can write it this way. And um, um, so one thing is, okay, what if we use the, you know, just like in conformal setting, use null planes, null two planes with respect to this conformal metric. That's some natural um, choice. Although it might be a little bit artificial because conformal structure is sort of how a secondary structure for a two, three, five geometry. But let's let's uh, just continue and see what this will get. So because we have a conformal structure of um, um, indefinite signature, um, at each point there's a null cone, right? It's a, when we projectivize it, it's a three-dimensional indefinite quadric defined this way at each tangent space. So we need null uh, planes in dimension five with, with respect to this um, uh, inner product. So that means if we projectivize null planes give null lines in this indefinite quadric, right? So we are basically trying to uh, you know, study the null lines in three-dimensional indefinite quadric. But there is this, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> well-known uh, double fibration for three-dimensional quadrics and null lines that lie on it. So Q is the indefinite quadric, which can be written this way, where this is the uh, uh, condensed component of SO23. 
So Q3, you can view it as SO23 mod out by first parabolic. And then the other side, we have, um, so this is the flag variety of uh, null lines in null planes in dimension four. And then we have um, the um, uh, Grossmannian of isotropic planes, right? With respect to this uh, uh, inner product. And this can be viewed at this O23 mod out by second parabolic. And then there's this uh, uh, well-known isomorphism that you can view, we're gonna review it quickly. Re, uh, you can view the uh, three-dimensional quadric as <coughs> three-dimensional space of uh, uh, Lagrangian Grossmannian. So which would be S symplectic of uh, SP4 mod out by the second parabolic in SP4. So, and, and on the other side, uh, we have um, a three-dimensional projective space with its natural contact distribution and its natural uh, contact projective structure. So in each contact direction, there's a unique projective line that passes to contact, contact line, contact projective. And this isomorphism here is basically the via that uses the Plucker embedding that sends, uh, embeds uh, uh, Grossmannian of planes in dimension four to uh, projectivization of <coughs> wedge two of R4. So if we want to review it, we have R4 with a symplectic two form, right? Written this way, I'm going to write it this way. And uh, then we consider those that are um, um, annihilated by uh, uh, the symplectic form. So this gives us, takes us to dimension five and then we projectivize. So this is dimension four and this one has a natural inner product on it, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, basically is a condition for the uh, elements in here uh, to have, to be simple to be simple uh, Y vectors. And uh, this way we identify um, um, a co-dimension one space in here with um, Lagrangian Grossmannians um, in dimension four. And uh, the quadric uh, can be viewed as the null cone, uh, projectivized null cone of this inner product. So this is very, uh, well-known and classical, um, sometimes called least corresponding so forth. Okay, so let's just make it a little bit explicit. Um, oh, maybe I, I forgot to mention something uh, that in this, I just wanted to make, uh, uh, point this out that in this matrix form, um, the, the way we have written it, uh, D uh, corresponds to, um, so if we have a, you know, this, this group acts on vectors and uh, um, the, the vector that spans D, the rank two distribution would be dual to omega zero and omega one, okay? So this, this sort of will denote it uh, as later on as V4 and V5 later. So just, oh, sorry about that, okay. Um, so here, let's again in this least correspondence. Um, let's let EIs be a basis. For oh, on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just about you, you write structure group. You, you write G zero uh, as a subscript, right? But you, yeah, it's 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 uh, the, the entire thing. It's like yes. parabolic, right? So like it's, it's, sometimes it's not a G zero coming from the grading. It actually has yeah. G G one and G two in it. Too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so it's uh, like a uh, superscript, like filter thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, no, but it it doesn't have uh, G plus so three. Right. It's it's the it's yeah. the it's the one that acts on the co-frame uh, at each point. It doesn't have the last level. On that it doesn't have the last level. It doesn't have G plus three. Uh, because it doesn't. Because act, it doesn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It doesn't yeah. have the prolongation part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought about sort of clarifying that, I forgot. Um, 
Uh, okay, so here we have uh, EIs for the symplectic vector space, and these VIs uh, span, you know, is a basis for, for, for this guy. And uh, yeah, it can be, it can be written this way if you, if you follow the, uh, the description. And this gives an isomorphism between these two Lie algebras, which explicitly can be written this way. So if you give a Lie algebra here in this form, this, uh, you get a SO2 3D algebra, and these are symplectic and bilinear, uh, uh, orthogonal with respect to these matrices. Okay. Now, um, also there is this uh, uh, cute double fibration business in, in, in this setting. So let's uh, uh, <coughs> use, this is something that they use in uh, classical two-star theory in dimension four, we're just gonna, uh, adopted for in this three-dimensional case, that if you take a point in, um, so if P is in here, so if you have P here, and then take its pre-image, we'll denote it by P hat in P3, and V tilde denotes a sort of pre-image of a point here V, uh, when you take the pre-image back and view it in the three-dimensional quadrant. So this is a point here and this is a point here. Okay, so we call two points on um, the uh, quadric null separated if they lie on, the, on a null line. That means if you take their pre-image in the projective space, then they have to uh, intersect at one point and that one point exactly corresponds to the null line which they lie on. So this, in this case, this would be a null line. It's a point in P3, so it would be a, correspond to a null line. And this terminology, we call that uh, two points in P3 are contact separated. So we have these contact lines on P3. That means uh, they lie on the contact line. Alternatively, it implies that their pre-image in the three-dimensional quadric intersect as, as two null lines intersect at one point, and that one point P tilde in Q exactly represents the contact line they lie on. And uh, one last thing is that if you have a null line, right, by a point in P3, which represents a null line, if you wanna get the null line, so that it's pre-image in Q3, that can be viewed by, uh, that, that, that's represent, the line line is represented by a simple projective class of simple vectors Z wedge W, where W is the uh, complement uh, complement orthogonal to Z with respect to the symplectic Q. For example, if you you know uh, take V to be the projective class of E four, so you have P three, you have the uh, basis elements E1 to E4 and take the projective class of E4. And so it represents a null line in the quadric, okay? What is it? Well, take E4 wedge E4 perpendicular. So this would be E4 perp and you can view it as, uh, so this would be, give, you know, span of E4 wedge E2 plus mu three times E4 wedge E3. And if you go back to the um, bases that are introduced, that would be span of V4 and V5. And in our case, this would be exactly the last two uh, uh, rows. And uh, th this would give the rank two distribution we had according when we wrote the bases for our structure group. So this is again, sort of classical, uh, 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 game that you know people uh, uh, dealt with in classical two-step theory in dimension four but here is dimension three you can especially a good read on these on this topic is the first chapter of this book and um, uh, yeah this is it's just something quite fun okay now let's go back to two three five we have remember the structure group g0 is a um, uh, in the Lie algebra uh, CO23, and then we use our isomorphism, uh, and we'll see that the semi-simple part of G0, the SO23 part, is actually sent by this isomorphism to 
matrices of this form in SP4. So in particular, you can immediately spot a filtration here, right? And uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, now a very easy task to uh, uh, state the following uh, proposition is that the space of null planes at each point of a two, three, five distribution has an invariant flag, which you can immediately spot by uh, in this uh, <coughs> matrix form here. So there's a point which corresponds to exactly this uh, row. And there's a P2, which corresponds to these three rows and then the entire thing. And again, we can, one can show that the structure group acts transitively on the complement of uh, P3 and uh, complement of P2 and P3 and a complement of this point P0 and P2. So this P2 corresponds to the projective class of E4, which again, by as we discussed previously, corresponds to the rank two distribution. And P2 is the two dimensional space of null planes right, which have non-empty intersection with our rank two distribution. In fact, if you, you can view it in P3, the space of all null lines, as those points that are contact separated from the point that represents rank two distribution. So if you start from this point on P3, this distinguished points, and follow all these contact lines, you exactly span P2 in, in here. Uh, oh, oh, wait, can, can I ask you? Um, so this matrix thing, it doesn't look like semi-simple story. Uh, it, 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 it has new potent part in it, right? Ah, uh, no, 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 but this is, right. Um, Okay, so yeah, this is not, what I said is not quite correct. So it's not the semi simple, we, I just view it as an embedding in the part of G3 that sits in SO23. Um, or maybe I can take the one that, um, um, hmm, yeah, it's not the, Yeah, you can view it as the, the part that, okay, you can enlarge this to include a CSP4 and just take the entire G3, G0, the entire Lie algebra of the structure group. And then again, you can get the same invariant um, story, the flag in the um, space of null planes. So you can, yeah, you can view it as, um, um, how, the part that acts on um, a bond of, of a null planes at each point. So you allow for a scaling action. Okay. Yeah, yeah so this, yeah, I should have, uh, this is not quite correct. Eh? But anyway, you can use the same, I mean, it's clear to see how you use this matrix form so, uh, viewing CO23 and viewing it inside CSP4 and obtain an invariant flag uh, for uh, on the space of null planes at each point of um, a 235 geometry. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay. So let's just, uh, let's put some coordinates on um, um, <clears throat> P3, um, so we denoted by lambda zero to lambda three and uh, then P2, let us, uh, uh, so this corresponds to in the basis that we used, we had E1, E2, E3, E4 and P2 corresponds to span of these vectors. And I'm just using this convention, changing uh, this instead of writing lambda three, I multiply it by this factor just for convenience later on. So this P2 corresponds to uh, um, vectors of projective class of vectors of this form. And the uh, null planes uh, 
that correspond to this P2, they can be written as simple two forms of this form. And we ask them to be uh, Lagrangian. So in particular, so we don't, for some, you know, just any null line. So you're given a point like this in P2 and the corresponding null line would be of this form and it has to satisfy this condition, right? So this would give this relation between ZIs, ZIs are the, so Z is equal to ZI EI. So these ZIs and lambdas are related this way. So they have to be, this, this relation, this, this uh, uh, relation has to hold. And uh, now we choose some affine chart later on to, uh, for our computation. Let's choose the affine chart lambda two equal to one. And then Zs uh, that uh, sort of give us uh, null planes for uh, points in this P2 would be of this form for two parameters T1 and T2. So in particular, all the null planes that correspond to P2, this invariant P2, in this affine chart, they are a span of V1 and V2, um, where these VIs, we express them uh, before in terms of two forms. And uh, the span of these two would give us the corresponding null planes in dimension five for uh, points that lie in this invariant P2 part of the space of null planes. And similarly, we can treat the other two affine charts. Okay. So this somehow, I think at least for me, this uh, 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 distinguished set of null planes uh, at each point of a 235 geometry, um, yeah, it's, it's something that doesn't exist for uh, five dimensional conformal structures and sort of captures the existence of this rank two distribution for such conformal structures. Now uh, we wanna, okay, we have now this bundle, this P2 bundle, and we can again um, do what we did last time. So in, call it, uh, you know, space of special null planes at each tangent space. Uh, so these are null planes with non-empty intersection with D and we can parameterize them. We can view them as a kernel uh, of, of these one forms here for parameters lambda one and lambda three. So in some affine chart, we were using the affine chart lambda two equal to one. And again, just like um, conformal structures in dimension three and four, one can um, view these parameters lambda one and lambda three as uh, parameters in the structure group G zero. And in this case, I'm, we are not gonna do it again, but you just follow the discussion before. And this would be lambda one corresponds to the parameter G one in the structure group. And this one, exactly if you wanna have it, this expression corresponds to parameter minus three times X one, if you use the parametrization given before, which again, correspond to uh, connection forms, gamma one and psi one. Okay, again, as before, uh, one can view the seven dimensional twister bundle as the leaf space of this um, uh, <clears throat> Poffian system. And uh, fibers are the two dimensional normal subgroups in P1 given by uh, you know, uh, parameters G1 and X1 in this structure, G0. Okay, again, like last time here, we have a seven dimensional bundle and um, we can cook up a, um, a rank two distribution as a, a kernel of beta one to beta five. So here you have beta one, beta two, beta three, and beta four and five are given by these expressions. And in particular, this uh, rank two distribution is integrable if the two, three, five uh, geometry is flat. And again, this is done just uh, uh, by very simple calculations, almost identically to what we did in, in last, last lecture. So you take um, D of these betas, 
you see that mod this uh, ideal, these are zero and D of beta four and D of beta five uh, are given by this, right? Um, so here, omega, if you add omega one and omega four here, you get a coframe for this two to one. So in particular, and we are working on the affine charge lambda two equal to one. So in particular, we are, uh, we see the appearance of A and B, this cubic B that we defined as a part of this ternary quartic. Okay, um, so let's perhaps it's, uh, I, I thought we can view it in the root system of, of G2, this uh, uh, twister uh, bundle. So here, if we view a two, three, five geometry here, let's call it, um, this is dual to omega zero, omega one. Okay, so this would be omega two, this is omega four, and this is omega three, right? So this, remember that this was the leaf space was <coughs> involved gamma one and psi one. So this would be gamma one, and here, this would be psi one. And uh, so this would give us exactly the seven dimensional um, twister bundle. And I'm gonna say it later because we're gonna uh, see another leaf space which uh, involves this psi four here. There's an eight dimensional bundle that's gonna come up. Okay. Um, now let's uh, again, like last time. See. Show me. Can I ask you yeah. a question? Yeah. So this this rank two distribution that you're you're getting upstairs. Uh, so does does it come up with, with any splitting, right? So I mean, um, I'm I'm asking because I mean, I think that that's a P one bundle over the uh, the usual rank one prolongation over the two three five, right? And so so that one has a splitting on it. There's a rank two distribution there There's associated a, with the Burrell. Yeah. But you 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 mean this D this this H here, you mean this one? Uh yeah, yeah. So so does that carry any extra structure on, on I on think that? it I again, I uh like last time I didn't but I think it has I don't think it has a splitting. I think it has a distinguished direction. I I don't know. Which which I is which is uh, that distinguished direction is a fiber over the Burrell bottle, maybe? Uh, yes, it, it, you, I mean, can, you can view it this way. Yes, 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 exactly. Okay, but, it view, exactly. The seven dimensional, yeah, like here, the seven dimension, this, this you can take it as the Burrell. Yeah, this is here, right? So this is, uh, okay. yeah. What's what's the uh, growth of this guy? Uh, uh, this... Actually, that one I wanted to check, but uh, I it was just too annoying. I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. really that could get really nasty. Um, okay. I mean, it's yeah. I would I would guess it's it's just uh, generic, but I I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Uh, okay, so let's uh, see, uh, look at the integrability of, of, of uh, 235 geometry uh, using a section of this bundle, right? So you want to have a section, a sort of a, a section of these special null planes such that, um, mm, yeah, this ideal is Ferbenius, right? So this, remember the, uh, so we want a section of this and this defines, a, 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 you know, so when you, exactly, you have, oh, this should be, this S should be lambda. So we want a section of this of that, such that the, if, if I is defined as this ideal, the pullback of this ideal to that section is Frobenius integrable. Okay, it, this is just, again, like last time, bunch of differentiation. So you have beta i's like this, you want D, uh, to, to be, you want to find i so that d of i is a subset of i. That means these two one forms, beta four and beta five, should be contained in this pullback, 
uh, should be in this ideal when pulled back to this uh, section. So this immediately, like last time, this exactly suggests there should be a two-dimensional reduction of the 14-dimensional principle, right? And another differentiation uh, um, imply, shows that, again, uh, when restricted to the section, uh, these two quantities, this is a quartic and this is a cubic, they have to vanish. Okay, these are some necessary conditions that have to be satisfied. Now, now we state something for sufficiency conditions. So um, <clears throat> if we want to have a section from the principal bundle to this, um, uh, so now instead of working on M, we want to work, like last time, immediate work on the 14 dimensional principal bundle, right? And view, view the uh, these special null planes as a projection of some co-dimension uh, co rank two uh, uh, hyperplanes in the big bundle G. Right? This is how we would like to view them. So we say that a section of, uh, um, of G into this uh, rank two bundle is uh, so we view this as a uh, special, uh, <clears throat> we have a section of special null planes of this form. And we assume that um, this section is a repeated root of the quartic and the cubic of equal multiplicity, right? Then um, this section is integrable if and only if that section is also a root of the quadric C uh, with one multiplicity less. So um, like last time, we, <coughs> the main observation is that, you know, we would like to, we have a, we are assuming that there's a repeated root of A and B, right? So we, translate this repeated root to zero, okay? We want it to correspond to basically, we had these coordinates, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, right? And we're working in the affine chair and that this is equal to one. So we wanna, first of all, translate it to zero, one, zero, right? So that means in this, uh, uh, um, uh, if we, we, we sort of, uh, use the structure group to translate the, this repeated root to this uh, point. That means at this point, we want the coefficient of the quartic A0 and A1 and the coefficient of the cubic B0 and B1 to be zero. And we want to consider a reduction of our principal model that respects this uh, condition. Um, we also, the, the main, another main observation is that to, you know, having a equally repeated root of A and B defines a section of this um, um, bundle of uh, special null planes. And this can be viewed, you know, just, just by looking at the action of the structure group on AIs and BIs. Um, so this, this is basically the infinitesimal action, right? Uh, the D of A. So when you're uh, uh, restricting to this bundle, that means A1 and A0 are zero. So everything here is zero, we have nothing. Here, this is zero and uh, this one is zero. So this one in particular gives a reduction of gamma one because we're assuming A2 is non-zero. Here, K is equal to. So gamma one is, you know, is reduced, so it would have to be a, a, a combination of omega i's. So this is mod zero, this is zero modulo omega i's, omega zero to omega four. And now look at bi's, again, uh, by the action of, you know, psi i's, uh, they are sort of related to a i's, but we're in this bundle, so this is zero and this is zero. Again, these are all zero, but here db1, um, we have this guy, this is non-zero, and also this guy. So this gives another reduction. We get psi one 
also zero mod, you know, omega i's. Right? And this is what I mean. So this psi, psi one and gamma one, they exactly correspond to the uh, group parameters G1 and X1, which remember we could identify the, you know, uh, we could identify them as the coordinates for the fibers of the twister bond. So here we get a, a two dimensional reduction of the principal bundle and we can, you know, because we're looking for um, uh, Ferbenius integrability and we want um, uh, this ideal to be Ferbenius integrable, we work modulo this ideal. So modulo this ideal, this reduced gamma one and reduced psi one are of this form. So in particular, we want these coefficients to be all zero because, so we have this expression and if you use them exp these expression and put them in, you know, the structure equations, we'll see that um, D of these uh, one forms can be written this way. So again, this is, this is modulo, right? This country. Um, so this is fine. Here, we want this to be zero. We don't want this. And we want this also to be zero, but we note that H3 in this case, on this, using these assumptions, is actually given by the derivative of C0 along omega one. So this basically is a notation that I use for D, the omega one of C0. So if C0 is zero, this is also zero, right? And this immediately gives the, you know, th that means basically C0 has to be zero. So this uh, uh, repeated root also has to be a root of C because remember C was given by C2 lambda one squared plus C2, C1, lambda one, lambda two. Well, here we are using lambda two equal to one plus C0, right? So if C0 has to be zero for this integrability, that means this has to be a repeated root of. So this basically shows this uh, if and only if uh, <coughs> proposition. And so we're basically done with having a form of, I, I, the same way for other cases of K, exactly the same way follows, the same argument follows, you just have to, you know, change the definition of this G and say A0, A1, A2, and B0, B1, B2 in, in, in here. But it, again, this is, uh, quite straightforward. So we have a form of Goldberg's Axe theorem now that um, a, a section of this uh, bundle of special null cones is, is integrable. Um, if, uh, um, so sorry, if we have a section, then um, um, any two of these three conditions imply the third. So you know, we basically showed if, if you have one, then this and this are equivalent. So we only need to show that if you're given two and three, then the one obtains one. Ex um, excuse me, Ovid, can I yeah. ask a question? So, so A and B would be the equivalent of the vial tensor and C of the cotton tensor. Exactly. So, so, see, uh, so yes, sorry. C is the vial, yeah. Uh, oh, C is the vial here, you said. Exactly. So th the thing is, remember the vial curvature of, uh, of the corresponding conformal structure for 2, 3, 5 involves A, B, C, D, and E, right? So there is no cotton here. Uh, I, I see. Because there was something that kind of confused me at the beginning, because you said that this uh, ternary quartic uh, encodes the, the full vial tensor. V vial. But but, but uh, I guess you mean the vial tensor of uh, 235 of a conformal structure of a 235 distribution. Yes. Otherwise, there are more components. Yes. And you, and then, okay, and then you can identify, I guess, the um, harmonic curvature of the 235 distribution. And then other pieces. So the, so is the A the harmonic curvature of the 235 distribution? Yes. And B and C are other pieces. Yeah. But so, so you, how many pieces do you get in total? You said A, B, C, D, and well, A, B. E. There's a quartic, cubic, quadric, 
a linear and a scalar. I see. So I 15, see. 15 entries, but written in this sort of with, with these representations. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I mean, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, can you just maybe just go back to the previous slide? I, I wanted to ask about this multiplicity thing. So, um, are you really asking that they the A and B have exactly the same multiplicity, yes. or B has uh, no, potentially exactly even more? No, no, no. It but the, no, okay, the so thing but then is you can have more. No, no. It's because your your re, your reduction your reduction isn't assuming. I mean, uh, they both have at least uh, a second order zero, but they could potentially have more than that, right? In that yes. reduction. Yes. Yes. The thing is, you can always, actually in this case, you can always ask B to have even multiplicity higher. That you can have a reduction like that. That's, that's not a really well-defined condition. But then you're, you can always have it. But then your statement of having equal multiplicity is quite, I mean, you should be a okay. bit more flexible. Right, right. Because, because yeah. if you state it this way, I mean, uh, like the homogeneous models won't, won't fall in this. Uh, under, under this hypothesis, for instance. Yeah, so so what I mean here is that the, the thing is, yeah, so this is a sort of a, um, a remark that if you have A has a root of multiplicity K, then mm -hmm. B always has a root of multiplicity. The same, the same uh, null plane would be a root of multiplicity K minus one for B. I think you can always, uh, I, I think so. You can have that, but then as asking for it to be also be a, a repeated root of most the same uh, of the same multiplicity. That's that's an invariant condition. But then it should be phrased as uh, having B has a, a multiplicity yes. at least yes. at least K. yes. That's yeah. right. That that's that's yeah. okay. actually. Okay. Okay. I think I even okay. wrote it in in the, in the initially like this, but just try to make it less. Yeah. Right. At okay. least. Okay. Right. Okay, fine. I'm happy. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so I, I'll just say that. Um, right. Right. So this, it's it, as as we discussed, the set of, you know, equal roots of equal multiplicity. Or well, I mean, this as Dennis said, this should be really B can have higher multiplicity, but at least equal to that of A. That's an invariant condition. And uh, it defines exactly a fine of set of points at each fiber, right? This is similar to this principle, null planes in indefinite uh, conformal uh, structures in dimension four. And uh, the same sort of uh, uh, reason, uh, you know, um, analogy, the same sort of computation can be done for uh, three, six geometries, but then one has to, because now we have Null three planes, and one has to really exploit the isomorphism between SL four and SL three three, and then you get a sort of a distinguished set of null three planes at each tangent plane, a tangent space, and and we can work with that. Well, there are two connected components of these, but then choose the one that contains the rank three distribution, and among those there is a well-defined uh, uh, set of distinguished null three planes with intersect the rank three distribution. But anyway, that's left for later. Okay, before we continue, uh, this is again quickly, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm going way more slow than I thought. Uh, there's a, um, I'm quickly going to say something about three integrability, which because we will need it for the, the uh, <clears throat> for what's coming up, is that one can also naturally ask for um, consider a bundle of special null coplanes, right? Because we have the, uh, you know, the inner product on the tangent space, we can also have it on the cotangent space. And these are those, basically these are rank three distributions whose annihilator are null and they're special null um, uh, uh, sort of subsets of the cotangent bundle at, at each point. So again, you can parametrize them, follow the same sort of logic as we did before. And uh, you see one, one finds out that, um, um, so they, if you have a null plane, 
just use the dual with respect to the conformal metric, and that gives a parametrization of these special null co-planes, right? And we want to find out working in this the same affine chart, we want to see when this ideal of zeta one and zeta two that which parametrizes these null co-planes is integral. Okay, we do exactly like before. We want d of it, we want to find i such that d of i is in i. So that means i has to <coughs> include the zeta three, zeta four, and zeta five. So remember here, this was again exactly data one was before in special null planes and data two was of this form. Now to i, we have to add three more one forms to make it, if we want it to be Frobenius integrable of this form. And uh, and that means basically we have to work on this eight dimensional twister bundle uh, to have this um, uh, Frobenius integrability for these null coplanes. And this is where this psi four appears that I talked about in this root diagram. And the three dimensional fibers of this are, are given by, by, by these three dimensional normal subgroups. So we follow again the same method, uh, differentiate and find uh, uh, necessary conditions. So this is, remember, I am writing this because this was ex exactly our beta three previously. So, um, so this, if, 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 um, yeah, so we have appear quartic, this quantity we had before, we had before, and here suddenly we get again, uh, C appears, this uh, uh, quadric C. And uh, D of zeta five, uh, which uh, this zeta five involved a psi four or one form, is something quite nasty. And in particular involves H and K. And this H and K are actually given in terms of these coefficients K and H. And these are actually not the vial tensor of the corresponding conformal structure for two, three, five, but actually these are the cotton tensor uh, uh, entries of the conformal structure. So they're in the uh, G plus three. Okay, so here you also have a new sort of a cubic and a quadric defined in terms of the cotton tensor. Okay, so we also have this natural map between null planes and these null coplanes, which are, as I said, start with a null plane, take its dual with respect to the conformal metric, you get a null coplane. And using the uh, expressions I give for these zetas and comparing it with what we have with beta, it's a direct inspection uh, to see that three integrability, so three integrability meaning that there is a, 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 a section of null coplanes that is um, uh, integrable, right? So null coplanes define a rank three distribution. So there's an integrable rank three distribution in the two, three, five, we call that three integrability. Implies two integrability by special null planes. Just follow you know, the expression for zetas and betas that we had previously, and this is uh, very uh, direct. And we have sort of a analog of the proposition we had before uh, that, um, a section of these special null coplanes with the property that A and B, just like before, they have equal multiplicity of K, right? And again, a root of um, C, now not only we want A and B to have equal multiplicity, we want C to have multiplicity here at least, as we discussed, at least what greater than or equal to K minus one. If these conditions are satisfied, so first of all, in these conditions, you immediately realize that two integrability is ensured, right? Because these are exactly the conditions for two integrability that we saw in the previous proposition. Then the this uh, a null coplane is integrable if that null coplane is also a here, you see, here I have at least. So this at least was in also other statements, but I just got rid of it. So this, this uh, uh, it, it is integrable if it's also a root of this K, this quadric polynomial involving the cotton tensor entries of multiplicity at least K minus one. So th this is again, goes the same way. We just built a sub bundle that, uh, you know, 
uh, over which uh, some coefficients of the of a, b, and h, uh, this h that I defined previously, are equal to zero when restricted to that co-dimension co three subbundle, and then we sort of immediately get a relation between Fermi's integrability and a repeated root of this k. Okay, so we can also state some sort of Goldberg's Axe theorem in this setting for three integrability, but I, 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 I haven't done. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I think we're almost, I don't know, maybe I'll go for another 10 minutes um, or yeah, we're, um, um, yeah. I'm not sure because I thought, uh, should I go on for another 10, 15 minutes or um, I should stop. Maybe you should ask Dennis or anyone whether they want to hear it. Yeah, if, um, I don't know. Just Whoever has to leave or maybe he's left or? If, if anyone has any preference, you can share with me. I think Dennis has left, but uh, please go on uh, to, tell, to tell us about this brief. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, so um, let's... Uh, um, now I want to give examples of uh, two through five geometries with uh, satisfying these integrability conditions. And to do this, we need to talk about um, scalar fourth order ODEs. And so these are, we consider contact equivalent classes of fourth order ODEs and define, they define Cartan geometry of this type where B is the Borel subgroup in, in GL2. So this uh, construction of this Cartan geometry is, is, is due to um, <clears throat> um, Morimoto and um, Dubrov, Chap, Te, and um, um, so what, what I said previously up, up until this point was will be in a joint work with Pavel Norsky. And here, what I'm going to talk about is, is a joint work with uh, um, Katya Sageshni. So we have a <clears throat> Cartan connection taking value in this, the, the Lie algebra of, of, of this group. And I denote that I write it this way, um, which is not quite how one views uh, <coughs> uh, GL2 uh, semi direct product R4. And the reason is we're going to say it later. I took this representation by just using, remember this was the G2 valued connection form. And I've basically cut it um, from here and set these guys um, equal to zero. And, uh, so, and made this <coughs> five by five matrix trace free. Okay. We're gonna see, you know, the, sort of talk about this later, but, um, so this is how I got um, this. <coughs> this is isomorphic to the Lie algebra of this. One can check. So we're going to talk about this uh, um, soon. Okay. So I also want to choose this epsilon so that this uh, matrix is trace free. And uh, as Cartan geometries, these things have you know Cartan curvature and the fundamental parts of the Cartan curvature. There are actually four scalars. Two of them are known as Vilchinsky invariants, uh, W1 and W0. And the other two I call Bryant invariants because they, if these two are zero, one goes to the solution spaces has a torsion, uh, <coughs> uh, has a torsion free GL2 structure. Um, so they have homogeneity three and four uh, respectively. And uh, Maybe I don't need to discuss how this W0 and W1 related to the uh, Vilchinsky invariance of a you know, linear fourth order ODE. So I'm going to skip this. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> uh, there is now, I need to introduce the notion of um, quasi symplectic two form on an odd dimensional manifold. So on a symplectic two form on an even dimensional manifold is a non-degenerate two form that is closed. But on an odd dimension, 
uh, no manifold. Well, this cannot be uh, non-degenerate, but we say you know it's maximal rank and a five dimension, so it satisfies this and it is closed. So this is we call it a quasi-symplectic on a five manifold. And um, a fourth order ODE that uniquely uh, defines a, so let me, going back to the uh, connection form, this is the grading is, this is minus one, this is minus one, this is minus two, minus three and minus four grading of the tangent bundle. So these two would give this rank two distribution with splitting and the GL2 part is basically this guy. This is the GL2 part when we go to the um, solution, if we go to the solution space. Um, okay, now, um, so any uh, fourth order ODE uniquely defines a two form up to scale um, that can be written in this way, right? Using, so remember there was uh, these one forms plus omega zero, which gave a co-framing at each point. So, but this uh, is a well-defined two form um, on the five dimensional manifold and it has maximal rank, but it is not closed. And we call it an almost conformally quasi-symplectic structure. So that's an unfortunate name. And uh, um, it has a degenerate direction, well-defined degenerate direction, which is dual to omega zero and remember, this would be exactly the tangent direction to the solution curves of the ODE. Okay, so we call a an almost quasi-symplectic structure a conformally quasi-symplectic if this um, line bundle of quasi-symplectic two forms has a closed representative. Now, this is a again a simple uh, proposition, simple exercise uh, that one can show uh, being conformally quasi-symplectic is equivalent to having a torsion-free and flat connection induced on the line bundle of uh, this, you know, conformal class of these two forms row here. So um, from the structure equations, you immediately want this condition, so no torsion, and you want flatness, okay? That means you have parallel section and a parallel section of the line bundle exactly corresponds to closed um, <clears throat> two forms. So imposing these two conditions on the uh, ODE implies that these two invariants, so this is if and only if, right? These two uh, scalars, they have to vanish, W1 and WC1. Remember there were four scalars. So we have W0 and C0 uh, so far satisfied, no condition. Okay, now we wanna use this uh, and uh, um, this observation, this quasi symplectic two form and uh, you know, do what we call a quasi contactification. So we are working on a five manifold, make this a direct product with a projection pi Take a representative, a closed representative, because we're assuming it's, uh, there is a closed two form. So it's closed, therefore uh, it has a primitive. So the primitive, we call it omega four in this case for this uh, representative rho zero in this uh, conformal class. Now on this product space, we have a coordinate T that corresponds to this factor R and we define a <coughs> one form uh, omega tilde four, which is a pullback of omega four plus this dt. Okay, so now we'll see that d of this omega four tilde is exactly equal to the pullback of rho zero. And it defines the so-called a quasi contact structure on this even dimensional manifold. So contact structure is defined in odd, in odd dimensional manifolds but quasi-contact is the same thing, the same sort of idea, but on even dimensional manifold. So it's a maximally non-degenerate um, <coughs> distribution, which is the kernel of 
omega tilde four. And as a result, because it's even dimension, omega four has to have a degenerate direction. So there's a characteristic on this for, for, for omega, the omega four. Okay, so we get a, on this product space, we have a quasi contact uh, structure. But also remember that we took a representative, rho zero, but there's a scaling action on this representative. Naturally, the scaling action extends to this uh, omega uh, tilde four that we constructed. And therefore one obtains, so there's a natural scaling action on this guy, which is defined on this M tilde. And then one obtains a conformal class of these quasi contact forms. Now, what we do is that this kind of so far very straightforward construction is that we cook up on this six dimensional bundle, a nine dimensional principal bundle, which is simply the pullback of the structure bundle of this fourth order ODE. So here fourth order ODE defines an eight dimensional. This is the GL2 semi-direct R4. And we pull it back on the six dimensional bundle. We get G tilde over M tilde. And <clears throat> here, this uh, connection form, the pullback of the connection form we had here plus omega four tilde gives a lifted coframe for on this G tilde, nine dimensional G tilde bundle. Okay, now on this M tilde also, just like we had for fourth order ODEs, consider the rank two distribution, which is the kernel of these now pullbacks. So we have uh, omega i's and um, omega one, omega two, omega three, and add omega four, and it defines a rank two distribution with a splitting, which is sort of a P2 mod Borel geometry on this <coughs> six dimensional manifold. And this um, nine-dimensional principal bundle is its, you know, the, uh, the corresponding uh, principal bundle for this P2B geometry. Now, uh, because we have this rank two distribution on a six-dimensional manifold with a splitting, we can go and find its corresponding G2P12 Cartan geometry, that is, which has to be regular. And um, because regular G2P12 geometries always descend and they correspond to 235 geometries. So this way we get a 235 geometry naturally from this conformally quasi symplectic fourth order ODEs. And uh, this is basically the, the entire action happens here that uh, we have a fourth order ODE and we sort of have this pullback bundle and we extend it to a G2 geometry. So uh, for this G2 geometry, we have the killing form with an involution that allows us to define the corresponding normal connection. And uh, um, the, this, this sort of killing form. And so here I'm, I'm dropping the pullbacks. These are all sort of, they have to be pullbacks of uh, of the connection forms downstairs. And you can see that it's always exactly the same. These are simply the pullback, but because we wanna have a normal two, three, five geometry, we have, to, and we introduce this omega four tilde, we have to modify all these one forms by a, adding a multiple of the quasi contact form in order to have a normal regular two, three, five geometry. And here again, um, I'm using this notation to denote derivative with respect. This is means derivative with respect to theta one with this underline, and this is derivative with respect to omega zero of three, zero. Um, so here, basically starting from the Cartan connection for fourth order ODE, uh, we just, get naturally the pull everything back and then modify them by a multiple of the quasi contact form, we get a normal Cartan connection for uh, two, three, five geometry. And the scalar, 
so this these geometries they have a, a their, their harmonic invariant is a weighted scalar and it's exactly the pullback of this uh, quartic so this w0 the Gulchinsky invariant and this is I'm viewing it as a weighted quartic right but because this thing defines a 235 geometry we can in fact find the carton quartic and this is what it is so a4 and a1 uh, all, all the way to a0 are the derivatives of this w0 with respect to a theta one so uh, a dual to the one form theta one and moreover the fifth derivative of w0 is mostly theta one is equal to zero so once we have this we we can say a lot we have this relation between this conformally quasi symplectic fourth order ODEs and two, three, five, everything seems to be very explicit. And we can go on to consider some interesting classes that arise this way. So remember, fourth order ODE is locally given by a defining function, which is a function of five variables. If you require that it's conformally quasi symplectic, meaning that this two form has a, <coughs> a closed representative, this brings it down to one function of four variables um, uh, of, of uh, <clears throat> gener generality. And then there are the following sort of natural classes to consider. So if this Wilczynski invariant is zero, then that immediately from what we discussed that the Carton quartic is zero. So we get a flat two, three, five geometry. So the class of fourth order ODEs that via this quasi-contactification give a flat 235 geometry is in fact has a finite dimensional moduli space. So they define torsion free GL2 structure with symmetric Ricci tensor and they depend on five constants. This is again similar to what we did towards the end of last session. Um, you follow the recipe and then you get just the uh, five parameter family of such only. Another condition is to set this other invariant of fourth order real is equal to zero. That actually implies that the third derivative of this Wilczynski also has to be zero, right? So in particular, remember we had the expression for the uh, coefficients of the Carton quartic. That implies the Carton quartic has type two, real root. It has the real root of uh, multiplicity two. And in fact, it is three integral, right? Because this Fafian system becomes Ferbenius integral. And unfortunately, this is a Fafian system that belongs to the affine chart lambda one equal to one and not lambda two equal to one. I did everything so that it's all uh, matches up, but somehow this <laughs> here, uh, I, I got something wrong. So one has to, you know, it's, it's anyway, it's, it's a minor thing. So this is, this Fafian, this uh, ideal is Ferbenius and it's three integral. So these uh, fourth order these fourth order these depend on two functions of three variables. Another natural condition is when uh, again this c zero is zero, but the second derivative of w zero is equal to zero. In this case, the Carton quartic has type three, so it, there's a repeated root of multiplicity three, and in this case, the two three five geometry has a holonomy reduction to this uh, contact parabolic to p two. And the generality is one function of three variables. And lastly, if C0 is equal to zero and the first derivative of W1 is zero, then you have a type N, again, holonomy reduction, three integrable, and this is the generality. And the last thing I'm gonna say, which is pretty um, uh, sort of uh, now simple with what all we've learned is to use a very nice theorem of Mark Fells in which he proves that a fourth order ODE is quasi conformally quasi-symplectic, the condition that we required in order to be able to quasi-contactify, if it is variational. So the fourth order ODE is the only Lagrange equation of some second order Lagrangian. So that basically allows one to state the following corollary with our construction and Fels's uh, <coughs> theorem that um, having a two, three, five distribution equipped with a choice of infinitesimal symmetry is in one-to-one -one correspondence with fourth order ODEs 
that are variational. So uh, one direction, we basically know how it works. Um, so we have a, um, we view, the key is to view two, three, five geometry as, uh, you know, Cartan geometries of this type. So if you start from a fourth order root E, then remember the recipe we introduced this direct product space and this DT variable. So this, uh, you know, D partial partial T would be the infinitesimal symmetry of the corresponding two, three, five distribution and uh, is sort of transversal to the quasi-contact distribution on, for, for this geometry. And conversely, if you have a two, three, five geometry with an infinitesimal symmetry V, then immediately you get a reduction from uh, G2, P1 to, to P1, P2, contact parabolic and Borel geometry. In particular, we can have a, a pick a, a representative, a quasi contact form such that theta of when theta eats this uh, infinitesimal symmetry, what one gets it, it's dual to the infinitesimal symmetry. And because it's uh, infinitesimal symmetry, these relations have to hold. In particular, when you uh, hook V inside D theta, it has to be zero. As a result, D theta has to be the pullback of some two form on the leaf space of V. And this uh, two form, because of this relation is obviously uh, closed. So it defines a conformally quasi-symplectic structure on the five dimensional leaf space. And uh, one can identify this, uh, the quasi-contact distribution upstairs with the tangent um, space of the leaf space of V. So um, as a result, there's a, a rank two distribution with a splitting. So one has a quasi conformally symplectic fourth order root E. So this sort of settles this corollary, uh, this one-to-one -one correspondence. And the idea is next time to basically use the same um, idea, so same observation and try to extend it to a larger setting, which in particular includes conformal structures in dimension three and four and higher, and for instance, three, six geometries and causal geometries. And the key is this quasi-contact nature that we use and this quasi-symplectic form that we have. And these are the references. I introduced this uh, for something for this incidence relationship. This is a joint paper with Pavel that um, in which I um, uh, included this uh, um, Goldberg Zach's theorem for two, three, five geometries. This idea of quasi contactification was inspired by these papers of Chap and Salich. So there's a zero part, which has a different name, but uh, there's one, two, and three parts, but the third part is about the GG operators. And this is the paper I'm writing with uh, Katya on this. Um, uh, <coughs> Quasi contactification business. And this is Mark Fels's uh, paper in which he talked about variation of fourth order weeks. Um, I think that's it. Sorry, it went over time and that was pretty fast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, are there any questions? Oh, just one question or comment from me. This is yes. Boris. Uh, and uh, I think one important uh, uh, thing is that in case of Mark Fell's paper, so uh, the equation being, so th there is a way to, uh, so variational means essentially that uh, it's an earlier Lagrange equation for a certain second order Lagrangian. And the second order Lagrangian can be interpreted exactly as an, uh, an underdetermined ODE, like Monge equation. And that's exactly two, three, five distribution plus one uh, infinitesimal symmetry. So I was thinking, I was, I was wondering whether this point of view was explored somehow. I mean, the, the, no, not at all. I, I, I'm aware that you uh, actually you um, have a work on these two, three, five geometries that are uh, somehow variational. And but um, 
I exactly I couldn't make this this link the, the one that you actually mentioned I I don't know that would be obviously that would be very interesting to know no that's exactly what you're describing but you're describing this in like more like a geometric way while uh, well what you can get using Euler Lagrange equation is like analytic approach the same correspondence because because you in your paper you basically I couldn't find a statement that says a two three five geometry um, I, I don't has, think I has had, an infinitesimal symmetry or uh, no no I don't think I had any papers on two three five distributions actually okay. <laughs> no but, I, I think because you talk about being variational in the context of two three five um, well, maybe. Yeah, there's a paper by Igor and you. Yeah, yeah, you have. Oh, you have Igor, you were looking at. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe some time ago. It's been a long, long time ago. But yeah, I. Uh, that, that, what you're saying, obviously, is uh, I should. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Consider, yeah. yeah. May, I, may I ask a question? Sure, sure. Yes, uh, yes, yes. My question is: uh, Are there some any relation with? Uh, Mon jumper equations that is uh, you talk about some two homes on contact manifold and uh, I remember that uh, in five dimensional contact manifold if you have uh, some two homes then uh, it related to uh, it defines uh, mon jumper equations so that uh, 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 I wonder if there are some relation with uh, Monjamber equations. It may be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, mm. I am not, I ha we haven't explored this direction at all, but obviously that would be interesting, yes. Um, I don't know. No. Okay, but okay, okay. But uh, so you have two home, some appears on contact manifold of five dimension manifold, no? Uh, the, the thing is we don't have a contact distribution. We have a rank two distribution. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, rank two distribution. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, on, oh, you are only, uh, uh, but uh, in, uh, in some correspondence, uh, you can also uh, go to contact manifold, no? Yes, well, that, that would be um, mm. um, like you get a quasi contact structure. So it certainly is just if you question yeah. by characteristic, you end up with a contact many five dimensional yes. contact manifold. I guess so. Yes, that, that but, should be there should be a contact manifold somewhere, but yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, but not, not directly. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, it's it, what yeah. has to again sort of build yeah. up to, to yeah. get to it. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, if there are some relation with uh, Monjamp equations, uh, it's maybe also very interesting. And, uh, yes, I mean, the, uh, obviously, yes, yes. But, but we, we, I don't know. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I think we are over time already. So are there still any questions? Because otherwise, I thank Omid again for this very nice lecture. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Omid. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank bye, -bye. You.